Hi, my name is Katie Talinsky. I'm the Director of Faith Formation for Christ Prince of Peace, St. Lawrence, Christ the King, and St. Gertrude. And I'm happy to offer you my scripture reflection for the third Sunday of Easter. Unfortunately, humanity has not changed a great deal in terms of the desire to silence the voice of our Lord in this world. In today's first reading, we hear an account of the disciples who were standing before the Sanhedrin, where the high priest questioned them by saying, We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. In this account, the disciples offer us a powerful example of standing up for what, or rather who, they believe in. In today's world, we see the voice of Jesus being drowned out by our culture. Instead of helping each other to follow God's commandments, the culture tells us, you do you, which often leads us down the path of sin. Social norms dictate that we should avoid the topics of religion and politics. We may have family members and friends who are outwardly making sinful decisions. Instead of performing the spiritual work of mercy to admonish the sinner, we keep our mouths shut. Our culture invites us to silence the most holy name of Jesus on our lips. What is interesting to me in this first reading is that the disciples were rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. Instead of dejected in the persecutions they suffered for teaching in God's name, the disciples rejoiced that they were worthy to be victimized for the sake of their faith. A good question to reflect upon is, do I have the humility to rejoice when I suffer because of my faith? In today's gospel account, we hear about the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. The disciples had not caught any fish. When they came to the shore, they saw Jesus, but did not recognize him. After they told Jesus that they didn't catch any fish, he told them to cast their net off the right side of the boat. They ended up catching 153 large fish. The beloved disciple, who we know to be John, recognized Jesus. When Jesus invited the disciples to have breakfast with him, the disciples realized that it was the Lord. Jesus then questioned Simon Peter. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. We cannot simply love Jesus without doing good works in his name. Loving Jesus and serving him go hand in hand. As he once called the first disciples, he calls each one of us to feed his sheep. We may live in a first world, but the people in our country are spiritually starving. We have to be willing to answer God's call. In order to perform spiritual works of mercy, we must be willing to be persecuted for the sake of the baptismal call to discipleship. Each one of us has a choice to answer that call. We may not see Jesus provide fish for us like the first disciples. However, Jesus provides us his precious body and blood in the Eucharist to nourish us. Therefore, he gives us everything that we need to accomplish the mission of building up his kingdom on earth in a world that rejects his message, as they did at the time of his crucifixion. As our Lord says in the Gospel of John, If the world hates you, realize that it hated me first. I pray that the Holy Spirit will enkindle in us the fire of God's love so that we may feed his sheep.